Hello people of the internet and welcome back to the On Bar Arcade. I'm Nay and today is a very special day because we're starting a new complete series. That's right, and it's not just any complete series. This is one of my personal favourite games of all time, it's Shenmue. I've decided to play it on the PS4 as it's slightly more reliable than my Dreamcast. This is the Shenmue 1 and 2 remaster. Uh, I do intend to play through Shenmue 1 and 2, so let's get started. <laughs> So there's a lot of story in Shenmue. I'm going to let the uh, intro cutscene play out in its entirety. It's pretty long. I'll interject at points, but hopefully I'll let you get a feel for what the story is all about. I will say that this remaster seemingly has a few issues with audio mixing and some glitches, but if any of those occur, we'll just have to work through them. I think there's been a patch out already for some of the issues. I'm alright, but Hazuki Sensei. My father? His father's in the dojo. Here is the Hazuki Residence Dojo. And here comes Fuxan. There he is. How you doing, Fuxan? Fuxan. Real son. Fuxan. Yeah, he's fine. He's all right. Don't worry about him. But who's this? Got a long ass ponytail. That's for sure. It's Landy. Father! He's got bodyguards. Stay back, Ryo. For the last time, where is the mirror? I've no intention of telling you. So there's quite a few, like, Hong Kong action movie moments in Shenmue uh, that you'll appreciate if you're a fan of those sort of films, I guess. <laughs> Bit of a face-off occurring. Rio's dad coming off second best in that showdown. Why you? Now then, no matter how often you ask. I'll never tell. So Landy's after a mirror. And he's come to ask Rio's dad the whereabouts of said mirror. Now that's an impressive skill, to be able to lift someone by their neck, their full body weight. Under the cherry tree. There we go, the bodyguards are going out to look for the mirror. Do you remember Chao Sun Ming? Chao? That's the name of the man you killed in Moon Swoon. It can't be you. Get up. I'll allow you to die like a warrior. There it is, the blow that can kill a man. Father. There's the mirror. That's what he came for. He's got it tattooed on him as well. Mm. 
is the man with the dragon tattoo. I quite like the epic music, even if it sounds maybe a little bit out of place for a video game at the moment. Forgive me for leaving you alone. What? What are you saying? Father! Your friends. Keep friends. Those you love close to you. Uh, no. Father. No! So yeah, that's a moment I strongly remember from playing Shemu in my childhood. Obviously, I watched the intro cutscene any time I was uh, going to be trying to run through the game. Probably completed it a good four or five times at least all the way through, Shemu 1 and 2. Um... Fairly long game, not super long, but I think it helps to take time between completions just to forget a little bit of what you have to do. Anyway, this is four days after Rio's dad was killed and Landy took the mirror. Life sort of returning to normal. There's a man on a motorbike there in our mailbox. Inie san coming to collect the mail. A letter for Hazuki sensei. Letter for Rio's dad there, she's just gonna keep that. Rio's busy dreaming of Landy and his killer blows. And this is really what drives the entire plot of Shenmue, is the murder of Rio's dad right at the beginning of the game. It sends you off on a journey to discover all about the whys, the hows of his killing. And uh, yeah, you find out a lot of other stuff in the process. But this is the main driving plot point, I guess you could say. Which I like, in a game that just gives you the main plot point straight away and works off it, I think can work better than a slow start sometimes. Rio can't really sleep, not when he's dreaming of Landy, so we better get up. So here we go, Rio's got a notebook, and in that notebook he writes down all the clues uh, which help him progress the plot. There we go, he's got some useful phone numbers in there. He's got his friend's phone number and his home phone number in there. He's got some notes on what's happened so far. So the dragon mirror was stolen by Landy, who murdered Rio's dad. He had a rare fight style and a tattoo on his arm. Apparently Rio's dad killed a man, and he needs to find out what happened that day in the dojo. So the rest of the notebook is blank, and there's nothing in it. We'll fill that in as we go. But for now, we're going to look around Rio's room. So it's 1987. What else would there be other than a cassette tape on his desk? This is the game's main theme on cassette. Now that'd be a cool thing to own for Shenmue fans. Just saying. So we're also going to take a look through his drawers. There's a cassette player. No use having a cassette without a cassette player, is it? Here's a fun fact. That little sound when you acquire an item is actually my uh, text and notification tone on my phone. So I might have to change that after playing this. There we go, Master System on the notepad there. Nice little reference to Sega's early foray into the console market. We've also got a cassette tape of Shenhua singing the game's main theme. Uh, we haven't met Shenhua yet, we won't until Shenmue 2 at the very end, but it's useful to have her face on a cassette tape. These drawers are all clothes. Let's go out into our house and see what's about. Your son, you should still be resting. It's been four days. I'm fine, really. And you? Are you all right? Yes, but I must keep busy, otherwise I'll get depressed. I understand, but you needn't work too hard. Mm, yes. Oh, by the way, I have this for you. So in there this is, is 500 yen. From tomorrow. I'll leave it on top of the shoe cabinet every day. It's like our allowance, oh, I guess. Fukara san, I believe he's in the dojo. Really? Thanks. 
So what I will say is I had a little go of this game when I first got it. It was a couple of days ago and the sound mix was completely off in the cutscenes, walking about the house, all that. From what I can tell, I think that's been fixed in an update because it no longer seems completely off. Uh, I'll let you know if that isn't the case, but that's fixed, I guess. Hopefully some of the glitches I encountered are also fixed and it's more like the original experience playing it on the Dreamcast. Luckily, I've done that several times, so I'll be able to tell. Your son, is everything okay? Don't worry, I'm fine. I want to ask you about that man. Oh, that man. Uh... The man called Landy. What did he talk with my father about? Landy demanded the mirror, and then they threw me out of the dojo. Oh yeah, we saw that. The black suits? Catch the names? I don't know. They came out of nowhere. I see. Thanks, Fukusan. Ryo-san, why? What you gonna do? Ryo-san, where are you going? You're not going after them. Oh, I am. Please don't. Look what they did to Hazuki-sensei. They killed my father right in front of me. I will have my revenge. I need to do this for my father. So the sound clips are still a little bit crispy. I think it's because they're only preserved in the original quality that they were on the Dreamcast discs with. Now remember the Dreamcast had GD-ROMs, which I think had slightly more storage than a CD, but slightly less than a DVD, which obviously meant that you couldn't have a load of crisp, clean audio on there. So I think they were compressed to 220 kilobytes per second, and that's what they're presented in here because they weren't stored in any higher quality format than that. So let's have a little look around the dojo while we're here. We look up at this poster. It's going to give us a memory of Hazuki Sensei, Ryo's father. This is training in the dojo oh, back in the father. day. What is he to you? A friend from school. I love the echo on the stuff from the past. And what is a friend? Just makes the sound clips oh, even crispier. A friend is a friend. No way, Rio. A friend is a friend? What about a friend of a friend? A parent is a parent. A friend is nothing other than a friend. But listen, Rio. Parents often die before their children. Oh. That's the law of nature. Uh, uh. He sounds disappointed by this. Friends will be there for you, even after parents die. So treasure your friends. And friends you can trust are true friends indeed. So this ties into his dying words of keep friends and those you love close to you because it's sort of telling us that he knew what was coming. He knew that one day Landy would come and get the mirror from him and ultimately murder him in the process. So there are some other interesting things in the dojo, but we'll leave them for a little bit later on. We'll collect our shoes and explore the house a little bit. So one of my favorite video game anachronisms is the fact that Ryo has a Sega Saturn. Now at the minute, it's December 3rd, 1986. So the Sega Master System is out in Japan and not a lot else. However, Ryo owns a Sega Saturn, so not even the Genesis or the Mega Drive. He owns literally a Sega Saturn. We just don't know. He's obviously got some sort of direct line to Sega and he's demanded that to start in their video game he needs the console after their next console. Fair enough, I suppose. We're gonna go out into this little hallway area and receive a hidden scroll, which gives us a move. We'll take that. Twin Blades. So to learn this move, we have to go into our inventory, go to scrolls. Looks like a hand move. And click Twin Blades. And then it's been mastered. Um, obviously they could have made it so that you master the move immediately, but I guess you have to read the scroll to find out what's going on with the move. We've also got a letter here. This is uh, Ryo's dad's kind of study area, so it's kind of an important in-game area. Let's have a read. Dear Ryo, those who follow the path of a warrior must be ready to die in order to stand by their convictions. Live for one's convictions. Die for one's convictions. That is how I lived my life. Ryo, it is up to you 
to discover your path and follow it through. My father must have known that Landi was coming. So there we go, more evidence that Hazuki Sensei knew that Landi was coming and was eventually going to take the mirror and murder him. Huh. What's this key for? Hmm. We better take that. This may come in handy. And if not, we can look like a janitor with tons of keys. So this is Fuxan's room. He has got another move scroll, which we're going to steal and read and master the move for. The more moves you have, the better the fighting is because you've got more moves to do. So we're going to learn Shadow Reaper. Uh, there's a couple of really good moves that we're going to learn later on in the game and probably use and spam in all the fights. But we've done basically everything we need to do in the house. So let's uh, head out, see what's going on in town. So we're heading out into the little town of Yamanose. I assume that's how it's pronounced. And yeah, this really gives a feeling of kind of small town Japan, like rural Japan. There's a few little houses, kids playing on the street. You know, not too much going on. Now the kids' voices in this game, I mean, they could have redone them, but the recordings of kids' voices and the English dub in general isn't amazing. Let's have a listen. Hey. Hiya. Are you looking for something? Nothing really. No, we're not looking for anything. Um, but yeah, I would have played this in Japanese if not for the nostalgia factor of the original Shenmue was only available in English over here on the Dreamcast, so we never got the Japanese dub. Hey, yeah. Hi, Megumi. Uh-oh. You got a kitten in there? You promise not to tell my mommy? Sure. Okay, then I'll show you. So here we go, we've rescued a kitten. Well, we haven't. Megumi has. Uh-uh. But this kitty, see? She's all alone. All alone? Yep. See, the other day, when it rained, a car ran over her mommy. She's just like Rio. My big sister saw it. She said it was a big black car. A black car? A black car. <laughs> I know the game too well. And then me and sis, we bury the mommy cat. And so now, I can be the kitty's mommy. That's not really how it works, but Megumi, but okay. We can't keep the kitten at home. Think she's hungry? Hmm. Conveniently, someone's left some cat food on the Ooh. shrine. Now, you might have noticed that playable bits in this game are in 16.9 resolution, and cutscenes are in 4.3, so I'm going to try and put some sort of letterboxing or whatever you call it either side uh, in the videos, because that's a strange sort of change in aspect ratio. So Rio's going to grab the dried fish and head back to feed the cat. Do this, so it's easier to eat. Wow, she's eating! She's so tiny, but already an orphan. Yamagishi-san almost got ran over too. Yamagishi-san? Yeah, the car was going so fast, he got shocked and fell. And hmm. hurt his backside, so now he stays home all day. <gasps> he broke his ass. Candy shop, I always stop by to visit him. But wait, we gotta think of a name for the kitty. When I think of a good one, I'll let you know. You promise? Bye-bye, dear. -bye, See, when I encountered this scene in my first little test run, the entire scene was a brown screen. It didn't render at all. So that's that's good that they've kind of fixed that, I guess. I don't know if they fixed it or whether I just didn't encounter the glitch this time. But it's looking a bit better than it was on the first run through. Now that little ping meant that we've written down in our notebook that we need to visit Yamagishi-san, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to get head into the town of Sakura Gaoka. Which is the next town along? We could talk to those ladies over there, but they'll tell us that the town chatterbox is going to know more about a black car than them, so we're going to visit her. Yamagishi-san took a terrible spill at the corner by the park. He was trying to dodge a speeding car. I think it was the same car that hit the cat. So, that's what happened. So if we needed any more hints to visit Yamagishi-san, there they are. So we're going to go and see him now. Excuse me. Yes? Oh. What's this name, say? Bit of a side quest, I suppose. It says Tajima. 
Does it? Does it? I'm, I'm not Japanese. To go to Yamamoto's house, but see, my eyesight is bad, so. Don't worry. I'll look for it. Wait for me in that park up ahead. You're so kind. Thank you so much. Okay, well, the music just stopped. But that's fine, I guess. There were a few audio glitches when I played through the first time as well. I tried some darts and the audio glitches were really uh, bad with the darts. So we'll see how they go once we get to the arcade. For now, though, we're going to talk to Yamagashi-san Yamagashi about his back. Yes, it's much better. But how did you know? I'm psychic. I heard from someone in the neighborhood that you almost got ran over by a car. Well, it must have been Megumi or... Sumiya-san, who told you? It was both of them. Could you tell me about what happened with that car? Sure. This black car came flying around the corner over by Sakuragaoka Park and went towards uh, Dubuita. I'll try going there. So we're going to try and go to Dubuita, but first we've got to find the Yamamoto's house. No need to search though, because having played this game several times, I can tell you it's right here. This is it. Thank you for taking the time to help me, young man. I have to go now. There are so few helpful young We even got a trophy for helping out. It looks like a silver trophy as well, as if that was a difficult sub-story to do. So we're going to avoid getting run over by this motorcyclist and pop in the town store for a moment. So I assume she's wearing gloves, but because of the textures, it just looks like her hand's gone, like, gangrenous and is, like, glitching into her body. Strange shop. There's nothing much we can buy that's going to be useful in the story, so we're going to exit. Oh, look, outside they've got toy capsules, gachapon machines. They got Sega-based ones. We got to buy one. 100 yen each, huh? Oh, look, hey, it's What's this? Bird bird Sonic bird dude. Bean, yeah. Yeah, Bean. Who's Maybe Bean? We get another Maybe we should. I mean, Bean's just terrible. We can't be leaving enough to get him Bean. Ah, Knuckles, there hey, he is. What's this? It, it's Knuckles, my dude. Y you know, Knuckles from the popular games. Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, one more, because we've got an odd amount of cash. So I'm going to make it exactly 10,000 yen, and then we'll leave the toy capsules for a bit. Aha. It's a heavy bomb. Now that's from Fantasy Zone. I always kind of wondered what they were back in the day when I played Shenmue because uh, I hadn't played Fantasy Zone at that point. But now we know. So we've got some girls here hanging out on the corner. They're supposed to be like school girls, but I think they're also supposed to be in the kind of um, Yankee kind of rebellious phase of their lives Excuse because... Me. Huh? Who the hell you think you are? That's what they say to us. <laughs> Just a little fun bit of Japanese culture, I guess, like the Yankee culture and... Uh, those kind of subcultures in Japan. So this is the town of Dobuita. We're going to talk to Nozomi because she is one of the people in our notebook whose number we have. There we go. She's Nozomi Harasaki. Uh, she's our friend from college, I think it's supposed to be. Nozomi. Ryo, have things settled down for you any? Yeah. If there's anything yeah. you can do, be sure to let me know. Yeah. So we will talk more with her later on, but it's important that we know who she is. I'm gonna dive into the tomato convenience store, see if we can buy some useful stuff. This has one of the most banging themes of any shop I've ever been in. I would love for convenience stores to just play this as I walk in. It would be much better than whatever Ed Sheeran is on the radio. So we're gonna buy some milk. That's for the cat later on. Thinking ahead here. We're also going to buy some cassette tapes. The reason being, you can enter the prize raffle if you buy cassette tapes, and there are some things that we want to win. I don't know what the exact amount you have to spend over is to get into the prize raffle, but 300 yen is enough. No prize this time. So really what we're aiming for here is anywhere between second and fourth prize. Uh, second prize stuff is games for the Sega Saturn. You can get no Hang On or Space Harrier that you can play at home so you don't have to go to the arcade. You can get tapes of some of the themes of the arcade games and you can get special toy capsules like Super Sonic, Metal Sonic, stuff like that. So it's kind of worth giving it a punt at least. I'm trying to get some cool one-off stuff. The selection of tapes changes every now and then as well no in the store. So if we come and buy tapes, we're going to try and win 
the top prizes from the draw. I doubt we'll ever listen to these tapes on our cassette player, but they're worth having. They're collectibles. I don't think you can offload them at any point, so we'll just be carrying them around for the rest of our quest. Hey, fourth prize! We did it! So what we've got here is rare capsule toys. We can have Supersonic, we can have Metal Sonic, we can have a hot dog truck or a BB Ultra. Now BB Ultra is from Space Harrier. The hot dog truck is the hot dog truck of a guy who is actually in this town. So what that's doing in this game in miniature form, I don't know. We're going to take okay, Metal Sonic because he's the coolest of those choices. Rio just stuffing everything into his back pocket as we head out of the shop. So it's getting on for 4.30 in the afternoon. I've just remembered we didn't ask Nozomi about the black car. Did you happen to see a black car that day? A black car? Yeah, it wasn't the kind of car usually seen around here. What kind of cars are usually seen around here? White cars? Sped past. Really? Tom had an argument with the people in the car. Do you mean Tom at the hot dog truck? Yeah. Why are you asking about that car? No reason. See you later. Why are you asking about that car? I don't want to avenge my dad's death or anything. I just, you know, just a random question, Nozomi. See you later. That's not suspicious at all, Rio. Well done. Now here's Tom in the hot dog truck that we saw a miniature of earlier. Tom. Hey, Rio! Tell me about those men in the black car. What? Nozomi what? told me you had words with the guys driving the black car. No, no, I don't remember. He's not they suspicious either. Who murdered my father. Your father? Please You're my father, him. yes. Right, man, I'll try. I saw a guy wearing this weird coat. He's the what one! Kind of coat? It was a deep green, maybe velvet or silk, like something Chinese. That's Landy. That's Landy. I know. Try asking Chinese people about Chinese. Do you know any Chinese? Sorry, man. But see that travel agency over there? They get some Chinese customers. I'll ask around for you too, man. Come by later. Sure. Guess we better go to the Chinese travel agency and uh, ask them about Chinese people. Do you know a man in a green coat? He murdered my father. Oh yes, sir. He's a regular customer of ours. I'm looking for someone who knows about Chinese people. Do you know anyone? Why don't you try the Chinese restaurant near the drugstore? You mean the Ajiji? Yes. I'm yes. Sure their employees are all Chinese. Thank you very much. We're here at the Ajiichi Chinese restaurant, so let's uh, go and investigate. Frying up some stuff in a wok. How's it yes. going? Hold on, he knows the people in the restaurant, but he are had to go and ask Chinese people around here? about Chinese Why people. Do you want to know about other Chinese? Why is he uh, so British? Nothing, really. Why do you want to know about is other Chinese? To do with what happened to your father? No. Yes. yes. Oh, no. <laughs> not all Chinese people are bad. That's not what I'm I saying, my dude. That, but the only clue I have is that they were Chinese. Please, is there anything you could tell me? You say Chinese people around here? But yes. Quite a lot of them compared to before. Before what? We don't really know the newcomers. I see. Why don't you tell him about the three blades? Yeah, tell me about the three blades. Oh, the three blades. Yeah. Three blades. Three blades. What are the three blades? Tell me about them. It literally <laughs> refers to three different blades that represent three different trades. The barber, the tailor, and the cook. They all use bladed tools. They do, the don't they? Uses a razor. The tailor uses scissors. Yeah, I get it. And the cook uses knives. Obviously. Ah, I get it. Most of the Chinese who came to Japan were one of the three. It doesn't cost much to set up, so you can start the business quickly. People of the three blades also know each other very well. What, well, all of them? It's a good idea to ask them if you're looking for information on people from China. No, just one person from China. So, I should go and speak with Maeda-san, Itoi-san, and Manpukuken Ramen, right? Yes. I see. Thank you very much. Well, those are some clues. 
Rather a long-winded explanation of the three blades, I know. So at 6.10pm, will any of these places be open? Maybe a restaurant. I don't know if we can see where Man Pakukan Ramen is. Aha! Right in front of us. In we go. I'm looking for any members of the Three Blades. The Three Blades? Yeah, the Three How Blades. Do you know about the Three Blades? Someone literally no. just told me about Kyle's it. son of the Ajiichi told me about it. He suggested I could find out more here. My husband, he died a while back. But I can introduce you to two other people. Who would that be? Yong Sun and Wu Sun. Yang Sun and Wu Sun? They both work at the steel mill, but they're originally Three Blades members. Where should I go to meet them? I hear they go drinking together at night, so... Right, there's a good few bars around here, so we're going to have to choose the correct one to find Yong San and Wu San. Let's try Bayou Koska. There's nobody here. Oh no, there are. They're behind me. Excuse me. I'm looking for two men. A Yong San and a Wu San. What? My name is Young. Oh, what a guess! <laughs> Sorry to be so abrupt. And I'm Wu. This man called Landy. Landy? I don't know him. Can you imagine if they Me knew him? Neither. And that was the end of the game. Yeah, he's my best mate. Might know about the three blades. Ah, did you hear that at Mampu Kukin Ramen? Yamamoto-san remembered. There's a mole near Yamamoto-san's mouth. That is so sexy. Very nice. That's enough out of Wu. You, Wu. <laughs> we were apprentice tailors as three blade members. But we weren't cut out for it. Now we work at the steel mill. Do you always intend to stay in Nokoska? I figure I'll work here another five years. Then go back to China and build a house. And get Is speech so? therapy. Thanks. Of all the three blade members in Dobuita, Liu San knows Chinese people the best. Liu San at Liu Barber and Hair Salon used to have a tailor shop. He was our mentor. Well, that was a good hint. We're progressing in our investigations. Like I said, it would have been cool if they actually knew Landy and were just like, yeah, here's his phone number. Gun. Talk to him about murdering your dad. Oh, hey, look, there's an arcade. Oh, they've got darts. There you go, some classic Shenmue jazz music and some darts. Hey, not too bad. Now, this game scores you not only on what you hit, but also the time you take to hit. No good. That was one. All right, a free game. But we made it through to the second game, so that's good. You need 120 points in total to get a free game. So there is a second free game if we can get over 240. No good. Unfortunately, we're not going to get over 240, but we are going to set a new high score at 207. You can win a mini that's version of the uh, darts machine if you get enough points. Unfortunately, we didn't get enough points, so we'll have to choose a different arcade game. Hmm, QTE title. <laughs> Now, between Yakuza and Shenmue, I'm pretty practiced at QTEs, so this should be a breeze. Oh, well, that's enough mistakes. <laughs> we'll settle this next round. Set another high score, and I think that's enough arcade games for today. In fact, I think Rio's done enough for today in general. We're going to head home. Rio's going to head to bed. Uh, we're going to set him to practice his moves, because you can sort of train in your sleep in this game. Uh, so if you set it to practice all your moves, you get very slightly better at all your moves without actually having to practice at all. And yeah, uh, it's been an eventful first day. We've kind of find, we've found out a few things about Chinese people, the Three Blades, and uh, where we can get more information about Landy. So yeah, Rio's had a pretty tiring day. He's going to recharge his batteries, ready for episode two. If you've liked this episode, leave a like. If you're new here in the Armbar Arcade, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified every single time we upload a video. Leave in the comments your favourite childhood games that you'd like to see a remaster or re-release of. Shenmue would have been mine, but obviously we've seen that remaster and re-release. I'm going to feed this cat some milk and I will see you next time in the Armbar Arcade. Hungry.